talking to us, Mayor Malik Evans uh -huh. of uh, Rochester, New York. Um, talk to us about what you're doing in your city. So here in our city, I mean, we're focused on a couple of key issues. Um, economic empowerment is a big one. We have the Mayor's Office of Financial Empowerment, in which we're looking to empower residents around three key areas, youth, uh, youth, em youth employment is a, is a big issue, um, neighborhoods, as well as um, small business and housing. Those are, those are big economic development issues that we're working on, so we have a couple of programs in which we're um, building homes for first-time home buyers to make sure that they can move up the economic ladder. Um, another issue that is very important is public safety. So we are um, focused on three key areas, prevention, intervention, and suppression. We've launched the Mayor's Office of Violence Prevention Services in which we are working with community members on ways in which we can prevent violence before it happens. Gun violence um, is a major issue in a lot of American cities and Rochester is not immune from that. So we worked um, to come up with things like our Peace Collective, which is a uh, a uh, conglomerate of uh, organizations that are committed to peace and alternatives to uh, violence and, and we've had some success there and then um, we're also interested in environmental justice so we have a um, aggressive plan to make sure that we are um, planting trees we have a we have a, a goal to plant 6,000 new trees by 2025 and we're on track um, to be able to do that but we're also looking at areas in which we want to um, have environmental cleanup, areas that have been neglected that would be ripe for development in the neighborhoods. That's part of our commitment to um, environmental justice. So that's something that we are also um, very much committed to. And then a commitment to building for a prosperous future. We focused on um, we, we're focused on bringing back neighborhoods together that were uh, torn apart by urban renewal. Um, so th that is also um, very important for us. So lots of different things that we're working on. A big commitment on our young people. We know that they are the future, so we're doing a lot of investments in that area. And then also issues around mental health the o and also the opioid epidemic. So these are all big key issues that we're working on tackling in our city. Uh, you know, you talk about all of those things that you mentioned uh, area of focus for this current administration. Uh, later on this afternoon, we, we have the vice president here um, giving a key speech on addressing gun violence uh, in the community, in the nation. Uh, you also talk about, you know, housing issues that significantly impact black and brown minority yes. community. Yes. Uh, you talk about youth unemployment uh, and economic justice also. Talk to me about, you know, if you can just expand uh, how you are working with the with your state and also the federal government yes. to implement some of these goals that you've set. Yes, we work very closely with the state um, for homes and community renewal, particularly as it relates to affordable housing. We believe that Rochester, New York is a model for affordable housing in, um, in, in New York State. And we have um, affordable housing units throughout our entire community, and we have actually targeted even our downtown area for um, affordable housing units. In the last two years, now almost three years that I've been mayor, we have really expanded and ramped up the number of affordable housing units that we are building in our city because the affordability crisis is real in New York State. It, 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 it disproportionately affects black and brown residents, but it affects all residents in Rochester. So we have worked with our state partners at HCR, um, who have been absolutely very supportive of our area as we seek to um, build more affordable housing units. But we're also focusing on um, home ownership in Rochester. We think that our home ownership rate is too low, so we've worked on um, first-time home buyer programs um, to make sure that we also work to expand the number of homeowners that we have in our community. Those are all important issues. And it, it requires an approach to work with all of our partners, private development, as well as the state and federal um, partners in order to make this a reality. Well, one of the things that I know today the president is traveling to North Carolina uh, to highlight uh, some of his economic agenda, as well as there is a new investment in providing high-speed internet. Uh, and that's something that mayors uh, I wrote, sent a letter to congressional leaders, yeah. the affordable um, broadband oh, yeah. program um, that is about to run out of funds yeah. if it's not extended and uh, even more investment into that. Talk 
to me about why this is this particular program we saw what happened during COVID how a lot of kids are left behind and you talk about you know employment for you um, access to internet is a key part of that right, right. yeah it is absolutely critical it is the, it is one of the number one priorities that we have it is it goes back to when back in the day when people needed to have a telephone in their house having broadband is just as important as it was 50 years ago for people to have a telephone in their home. We work with our county very closely to make sure that, um, that, that we are working on adding broadband in our community, We're working with our county to get broadband to as many places as possible. Not having broadband limits so much of the ability of people to be able to get an education. It, it limits their ability to be able to apply for jobs and for them just to be able to participate in regular life. So broadband is absolutely critical uh, for anyone that is going to be a part of the 21st century. So we have worked with our county um, to make sure that those broadband, uh, that broadband access is targeted to zip codes where there is a uh, dearth of broadband access. So that, that, that is just extremely important. Rochester, New York has, um, of the top 25 poorest zip codes in New York State, five of them are in Rochester, New York. The top five poorest zip codes in New York State, three of them are in Rochester. So that access to broadband is absolutely critical um, in our in our community. Um, you know, one other aspect that you talk about is uh, upskilling, human capital. Uh, we, as a black man, uh, you are one of the few black mayors in the nation. Uh, we have a black mayor in New York also, in New York City. Uh, talk about your experience and how you are bringing that to your job, yeah. to, to uplift the community. Well, you know, I mean, I think um, having um, lived experiences is, is extremely important because you're able to bring some of your experiences to the office so you know what people are feeling in those neighborhoods. And you cannot help people if you don't know what they are feeling. Now, you may not be able to feel and replicate exactly what they're doing, but you have to be able to identify with them. You have to, you have to understand the importance of job training. I understood what job training did for me when I was a young person, which is why um, in Rochester, um, during my term, we launched the largest job uh, training programs that we could have because we know that that's important. We know that I know that jobs jobs kept me out of trouble as a youth, which is why I invest in youth. I know why recreation centers and making those investments are important because I know what they did for me. So when you're able to bring those experiences to the office, it allows you to create policy that will affect broad swaths of people and also allow them to be able to experience the opportunities that you have. So I, my goal is is to make sure that young people and adults and families have access to the same opportunities that I had, but even on a larger scale. And I think that that's why um, that experience is helpful uh, in the mayor's office. Um, you, you know, one aspect that we're seeing across the nation right now, attack on diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, which will significantly impact the minority community. Uh, as mayor, as you said, uh, of one of the city of minorities, uh, how are you working to address this ton that, yeah. that is sort of growing, uh, not just within cities, but in the nation? You have to address it with facts. If you don't address it with facts, then, then you will never solve the problem. Um, a black woman um, has a higher risk of dying in childbirth or her baby dying in childbirth than any time since the Middle Ages. Those are facts. Those are numbers. So I, um, I, I come from a banking background. I believe in facts. So instead of the, these emotional conversations or these mistruths that people put out there, we need to lead with facts. And we know that, for example, black female mortality is a major issue. It's a major issue in, in, in Rochester. It's a major issue across the country, even when you control for income. Even when you control for income, um, African-American women have a greater chance of dying in childbirth. So w as we talk about issues and disparities and trying to bring um, a commitment to equity and social justice, you have to lead with the facts. And the facts don't lie. And that is how we get around a lot of, a lot of these things. When we talk about poverty um, and the zip codes that I mentioned um, in my city, they are disproportionately affecting black and brown residents. Those are facts. So if you want to change these things around, um, I think it's important to lead with facts, and when you do that, that allows people to be able to come around.
Uh, one of my last question to you that you mentioned, uh, you are coming from a banking background. Economic empowerment is very important, as you mentioned at the top. Uh, one aspect that the administration has invested a lot in is the uh, CDFR. Yes. Uh, can you talk about how you are working with um, various organizations and various banks uh, to empower your community yes. as well as, you know, you know build that wealth? Yeah. So through our Office of Financial Empowerment, which we have, um, there are many cities around the country that has offices of financial empowerment. We have one in Rochester that is extremely robust. We are working with several CDFIs, particularly in the um, home ownership space. Uh, we are looking at launching a youth savings account. So we want to make sure that how you move from a poverty mindset to a prosperity mindset is making sure that you empower people from an economic empowerment standpoint. And that means working with various partners, particularly community development financial institutions, um, which we have uh, a, a several in Rochester that are um, helping to advance that goal of economic empowerment and economic mobility. Thank you so much, Mayor, for talking with us. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank yep. you. Thank you.